Okay. So, I was just watching um, D-Boss Garage's latest video. Uh, only got a few minutes into it, and then I kind of got an idea for a video of my own. So, I figured I would uh, sit down with you guys for a few minutes and uh, go over a subject that I'm sure a lot of us who have worked in you know, the amateur machining thing have also experienced, and that's working on cars, bust knuckles, that sort of thing. It sucks. We've all been there, or we're all going to be there at some point in time. But the reason it kind of resonated with me was earlier this morning, um, since I've had this uh, Toyota Corolla come in that I'm tinkering with, it dawned on me that I have a piece of crap 2.7 uh, V6 Chrysler V6 over in storage <clears throat> so I figured I would uh, snag a couple of bearings off of it and uh, see if I could use them for uh, something I'm doing with this Corolla whole other story I'll get into that later or in another video but the thing that I was having concerns with while I was trying to get down to the bearings. Now granted, this motor is out of the car and it's still a, a bigger pain in the ass to work on this motor than it is the Toyota motor that's in the car. But what does that tell you about Chrysler engineers? It, it, if Chrysler engineers engineered the world, rainbows would be black and white. Mark my word on that. Anyways, there just happened to be a 4.3 liter V6 sitting right beside it. So here I am trying to bust these um, bolts loose with just rudimentary tools. I didn't have anything fancy because it's next door. You know, I didn't want to haul a ton of stuff over there. So I'm worrying about this the whole time. Am I, is this going to slip? Am I, is it going to break loose? Am I going to bust my damn knuckles on this? So, you know, after sitting down and watching D-Boss's video, I thought, hey, why don't I uh, share a couple of things with some people with, you know, the internet on this. So I have, over the years, I've developed a bit of a secret weapon. Because I've worked on, well, just about you name it, I've worked on it. I even include in a couple of airplanes. So you find yourself in some really bad circumstances from time to time. Every once in a while, I cannot find a better way to protect myself than this right here. All this is is a, just some kneeling pad. It's just a piece of foam in here. And if I see that I'm working on something, working on busting a bolt or nut loose, and I just have no choice but to, to push... If at all possible, I try to find a way to put this or something else padded wherever my hand is going to go if I come off of that fastener. Now, I'm not saying every single time I use that, but when I've got a little bit of time to take some forethought, I usually try to, I'll, I'll, I, will, I will try to implement something along those lines. But, uh, obviously not everybody has something like that sticking around. Heck, for that matter, I'll be out working on something and I need to kneel down, you know, kneeling down on the concrete, on the, um, the gravel, just sucks. I'll just throw that underneath my knee. You know, anything, you know, this, hitting this, as opposed to a part of an engine block or engine or framing of the car is a heck of a lot better, you know, so just think about, you know, what you might be able to do. But anyways, here's, here's a few other points to consider. And uh, this one is something that I might actually look a little more closely into. <clears throat> so I know we've all seen the uh, mechanics type work gloves. <clears throat> and I've seen them as well, obviously. But I've never seen them quite like um, the type that D-Boss showed in his video. 
he showed a set of gloves that really had some pretty aggressive padding on the back sides. Now I've seen mechanics type gloves that they might as well have been tube socks in the past, but these actually look like if you tried to punch an engine block, you'd be like, nothing to it. They had they had some very aggressive padding. So special specialty mechanic gloves like that could be very helpful in, in that regard. Another thing to really pay attention to, and this kind of in part comes from my uh, my time out as a commercial electrician. Been on all these different job sites and they always want to just ram tons and tons of the safety information down your throat. I'm not saying safety is a bad thing, but give it to you one time and move on. To get retrained job after job after job is asinine, but whatever. At any rate, one of the things that popped up as a commercial electrician is consider your body position. Uh, this can be applied with regards to working on a car as far as where is my hand going to go if I if this thing breaks loose? Am I going to run into something horrible or is there a way, can I move the wrench over to here to where my hand just runs into free air? Or is it possible for me to, instead of pushing, pull and not provide myself with the additional danger of coming loose and smacking myself in the face or knocking a tooth out with a wrench or a ratchet. Um, so that therein lies the other thing to consider. Um, you can just as easily make your situation worse. But body position is something that can help you protect your knuckles. It can also help you get more leverage to get into a body position to where you can physically wrench on something that's otherwise too difficult. Um, putting your body in a position to where if the car comes off of its jack stands, you've got a fighting chance of getting out from under the car. You know, things like that. Think about your body position. Think about your body mechanics. Um, the right tool for the job. Big, big topic all in its own right. If you're trying to, kind of like what I was doing this morning, I was working with these dinky mechanics, uh, portable mechanics kit, when what I would have liked to have had was, you know, a big, serious, you know, long-handled ratchet. But didn't want to take the time to drag it out and drag it, you know, over there to do it. So, see if you can use an extension to get away from all the mechanical clutter and put yourself into a safe position to where if it breaks free, you're just punching into the air. Uh, use a longer ratchet wrench or wrench or maybe even a cheater to give you enough leverage so that when you go through your motion, you don't have to go so far because you're not putting as much force behind it. And then, of course, you know, within the right tool for the job sort of uh, hemisphere would be things like, is this a good time to use a hammer inappropriately to jar this fastener loose? Or is this a good time to pull out an impact wrench or an impact driver to break this fastener loose? So, I mean, you know... A lot of this stuff is common sense, and I know a lot of us get in a big goddamn hurry to finish up our projects, but I remember when I was uh, probably in my mid-twenties, I was working on an old GMC Jimmy, rusty as all get-outs, and I was doing suspension work. I was trying to change leaf springs from one four-wheel drive to another, and I was out there working with a small sledgehammer big wrenches, etc., etc., and for whatever reason, I slipped off, I think I, was, I think I was using the hammer, I think I slipped off, and I smashed and gashed open, I think it was one of my thumbs, thumb or one of my fingers, anyways, 
It hurt like hell all night long. My, it was throbbing. I couldn't go to sleep hardly because it was hurting so bad. I mean, I even have this trick where if, if, if I'm throbbing right there, I'll take my teeth and I'll put a little bit of pressure on back here, you know, to kind of like a uh, pinch the nerve sort of thing. Didn't matter what I did. It still hurt like hell. So there are, there's almost always a way to mitigate the dangers. And I'm not one to really harp on safety related topics, but this is one of them that really sucks. <laughs> so, you know, short of getting onto a big lathe and getting your hand or arm wrapped up in it, this is, this is one that's easily preventable. So anyways, just a few little tidbits that might be of some interest to somebody in the future. So till next time.